My name is Elin. I am an associate professor of medicine and a consultant in the division of hematology here at Mayo Clinic. I also have dual appointment in the division of experimental pathology with uh, DLMP. My bachelor's degree was in chemical engineering because I could do the science of it and then I realized very, very quickly, you know, chemical engineering is a very broad field that um, I enjoy working with people rather than chemical plants and so I knew I wanted to do biomedical engineering uh, within that specialty and so in my PhD training as part of the MD PhD program um, I worked with a hematologist and so um, I knew that I wanted that not only that personal interaction as a physician to be able to um, hopefully help patients on a one-on-one -on -one basis but to do research that hopefully can help many patients um, at a time with, with the research findings. So that's what led um, to a career in, in uh, clinical and translational research. I've, I've had um, lots of mentors and, and actually the nature of my research is, is very uh, cross-disciplinary or multidisciplinary and so by nature I have many different mentors that help me in, in different ways. So what I do is um, doing research both on the laboratory side and on the clinical side related to how we can use patients' own cells, uh, majority of time in this case, patients' own immune cells to help them fight cancer. And so my research crosses not only the clinical discipline, my practice is in lymphoma and myeloma, um, but also laboratory studies of uh, specific immune cells and how I can um, enable them to better fight cancer. Um, so it crosses immunology, but hence my dual appointment with DLMP and experimental pathology because this is a type of treatment that involves very specialized clinical labs. Um, they're not off-the-shelf drugs. They involve taking patients' own immune cells, modifying them in the lab, and then giving them back to the patients. So in that context, I've had mentors in all the different areas to help me build my career. You know, on the clinical side, I've had uh, people here, you know, I trained here at Mayo for residency and fellowship before coming on staff. And so I, I worked with um, great experts in the field like Dr. Wythick and you know, Dr. Ansel in lymphoma, and Dr. Raj Kumar, Dr. Kumar in, in myeloma. And they really helped me understand that, that clinical perspective of how to develop that research direction. Uh, on the laboratory side, the reason why I came to Mayo for training was that Mayo Clinic has the clinical laboratory capacity to take these things in the laboratory into clinical trial testing, to implement them into clinical practice. Uh, and that's not something that's readily available in many academic centers around the country. And so I worked very closely with uh, Dr. Aldit and Dr. Dennis Gastineau uh, in those divisions to really learn about that aspect of, of um, bringing that type of treatment modality into the clinic and uh, the laboratory research that goes around that. And then um, uh, on the, the laboratory research side, um, people like Dr. Hai Dong Dong, who was one of the world experts about specific aspects of immune dysfunctions uh, in cancer. Um, and you know, he's doing more of a basic research, but also how that can apply with the clinical focus. And so I really take different aspects of these people's uh, career, what made them work, and put them together into this combined uh, research focus for myself. Another hat I wear is the chair of the Cellular Therapeutics Cross-Disciplinary Group at Mayo Clinic Cancer Center. It's a big, long title. Uh, but it's basically a group that is functioning at the enterprise-wide level. So all three Mayo Clinic campuses um, trying to drive innovation and research in terms of how we can use cell therapy to treat cancer um, and the clinical practice. And so we do more than CAR-T, but CAR-T is certainly one of the hottest innovation in the recent years uh, as it relates to cellular therapy and cancer, and having two FDA-approved CAR-T product just in the last year and a half that's coming to clinical practice. So we've been very, very busy, 
uh, in terms of implementing it into real world practice so we can bring it to more patients and also continuing to do research to understand who are the patients that can safely go through this treatment and really benefit from that. So continuing to improve upon that treatment modality. And then of course, um, not just myself, but many investigators here at Mayo Clinic um, that comes together in, in this group to look at the next generation of CAR T, the, the next innovation um, in the field. Uh, but related to that, um, CAR T is just you know, one technology, and so we also have other cellular therapeutics uh, modalities that's been uh, developed in-house um, that can potentially work for a number of different cancers that currently we don't have a CAR T that, that works as well. And so um, when I put on my hat as the chair for the group, what we would love to see is to have some type of cellular therapy that is under investigation or ready for clinical use for all types of cancer, for all different stages. That's what we're working towards. A couple of different things that are uh, being done in-house at Mayo Clinic, and that's with the support of not just Mayo Clinic Cancer Center, but all the other centers at Mayo that's not just focused on cancer care, but innovating on care for patients broadly and how they're coming together to really support the, the growth of the CAR-T program. So places like the Kern Center, um, Center for Regenerative Medicine, Center for Individualized Medicine, um, they're all pitching in. And so we are working on uh, our own in-house development of making our own CAR-T, essentially, that we can test uh, for patients. Uh, so not just working with industry partners in the, the later phase CAR-T product, but our um, male innovation. We are also um, having a very large um, biomarker study that really pulls in specialists from all department that you can imagine that could affect um, uh, the patient. So people from um, neurology, uh, infectious disease, um, immunology, of course, um, even uh, viral therapies and so on, metabolomics, um, immune monitoring cores, so all these resources that are at Mayo and looking at uh, what is happening to the patients as they go through CAR-T treatment. And what we're hoping to find is some biomarker early on at the time that they're being considered for CAR-T therapy or within the first few days of CAR-T treatment that can identify those patients who's either going to do well with this treatment that we can give them CAR-T and just support them through it or who would need extra help, people who may have more severe side effects. So that can help us in terms of understanding how we can uh, look at innovations to maybe decrease some of the side effects or patients who may not respond to CAR T cell therapy alone. If we can identify those uh, characteristics early on, then instead of just waiting um, until a month or three months after treatment to see if it worked, we can innovate already to add on to that treatment to see how we can help those uh, patients fight off their cancer. So that's something that is happening right now within Mayo Clinic and it's happening across all three campuses uh, within the cellular therapy program. We also got quite a bit of support from the Kern Center for Health Innovation and Delivery as we implemented CAR-T into clinical practice over the past year where they took from their expertise from um, designers for healthcare delivery to look at the patient experience. So now that it's part of standard clinical care for patients coming through this very complicated, very individualized treatment, and to really come with an open mind to understand what are the stressors for the patients going through this and how can we improve their experience going through this treatment. And that group really identified many different points of care where they implemented their innovative intervention to improve that patient experience. And, and this is something that I think the rest of the country is trying to figure out how can we, now that it's part of regular practice, beyond just the science of it, you know, the, the clinical practice, how can we make it easier for the patients and their loved ones supporting them to go through this? And so this um, work that they did will be presented at the NCCN national meeting this year. 
and I know that the, you know, in my uh, relationship with the companies that are manufacturing these CAR-T products, there's a lot of interest from them and from other academic centers to hear from Mayo Clinic's experience about that and how that could disseminate uh, into other institutions' practice. And I, I think that is in alignment with what Mayo Clinic has been doing for a long time, which is, you know, for us, at the end of the day, it's about the needs of the patients first, and, and we're looking at it from many different perspectives, you know, not just the, the how to deliver the therapy, but the implementation of it, and then how to drive the innovation of that therapy into the, the next generation.